Hi Homeworthy, I'm Alex and welcome to my Winnetka, Illinois home. Let me show you around. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi everyone, I'm Alex Kaler from Alexandra Kaler Design, and we are in my living room at my home in Winnetka, which is just north of Chicago. We have been in our house for about six years now. We bought it when I was pregnant with my second child, and it was one of two houses that we looked at in the area. Um, and we really fell in love with it because of the backyard um, and just the general footprint of the house. It felt spacious, but it didn't feel overwhelming. Um, but that was about it. There, <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot that was redeeming about the interior. Um, and so we came in and we completely gutted the house. We took out every wall, window, door, floor, um, and we just reconfigured it. Um, so we didn't add on at all but we moved the living room to the other end of the house. We made the family room closer to the kitchen. Um, we just wanted it to be really conducive to the way that we live and entertain. Um, and the other thing that was sort of lacking from the house was that there wasn't a lot of character. It was built um, in the late 50s and it was trying to be sort of a traditional home, but there just wasn't really that element that we were looking for. Um, in my dreams, we were gonna buy this like pre-war house with beautiful moldings and um, this did not have any of that. And so we put in character in places um, where we felt like we could and it, where it made sense. We added some applied pencil moldings, we added crown and base. Um, we put herringbone wood floors into the foyer um, and we tried to just add a little bit of architectural interest throughout the house. We didn't wanna overdo it, um, but the idea was that um, we were going to just add some some personality and character um, and it's just it's been a wonderful wonderful house for us we have three kids now we have a very very naughty puppy um, so there's a lot going on here and the house just lives so easily for us this is the entry of our home it's not huge, but it feels gracious enough. And when we moved in, there was this really outdated slate floor that we replaced with the wide plank white oak herringbone for some visual interest. Um, and then I really wanted a spot where you could comfortably sit down and take off your shoes. We live in Chicago, so everyone's got like muddy boots and coats. So we've got this small um, fireside bench here. And then these little green um, elephants were sort of a happy mistake when I'm buying for my clients. I'm so meticulous about measuring, but for myself, I am not always so careful. And so I bought these thinking they'd be great side tables in my living room. And it turns out there are these little tiny stools. So I put them here and they're not all that functional, but they're very cute and they're my favorite color. And then we've got a vintage rug that just is durable and can withstand all of the Chicago climate <laughs> that's going on. Um, and then if you come this way, um, we added these pencil moldings to the walls for um, some interest and again to sort of like give it a little bit of a more traditional older feel. Um, when we bought the house, you entered into my husband's office here, which did not work for us because it just was too open to everything. So we closed this off um, and I had a beautiful Biedermeier chest in the house I grew up in and I always loved it. And so I found this at auction. It was the very first thing we bought when we bought this house and I just knew that it would find a house somewhere. I wasn't exactly sure where, but I love that it's here and I see it every day. So this was made by um, an artist who's also a friend of mine, Elliot Bergman, and it's solid brass and it's actually meant to be a bell. So you can hit it and it makes beautiful noise. It obviously functions as a bowl as well. Um, and it's just a, a really special piece to us. Um, the art over here was a wedding gift and I just like that everything here holds some meaning to me. Um, and, and it's also when we entertain a great spot for us to set up a bar and use for functionality too. So if you come this way, um, this is our powder room. Also, you know, used by my kids. So we've got a step stool tucked underneath the sink um, and some 
Italian Murano sconces that I got from First Dibs um, and just a collection of meaningful art. Um, coming through here, when I was a child, my grandmother made um, silhouettes of me and my sisters and cousins. And so that was something I really wanted to do for my kids and just have as an heirloom. So I had these done um, for each of them recently and it just holds a very special spot for me. I would say that my style in our home is rooted in traditional design and it just has sort of a fresh take on it. Um, I used to say that I wanted it to feel like it was maybe a little, like a drunk grandma had decorated it. Like there was some really traditional pieces that you might have found in your grandparents' home, but then a piece where you're like, oh, huh, that's kind of, I wouldn't have put that there. Um, and and I think that was sort of my my general direction with the whole house. This is our living room. Um, when we bought the house, this was a very dark wood paneled family room and not the good kind of wood paneled. <laughs> it was like the 60s falling apart wood paneled um, with a big river rock fireplace. So we started over, we decided this was the spot that um, we were gonna have our formal living room. It was a little bit removed from the kitchen, which I really liked. Um, this was the main piece that I knew I would use in here um, before I started any design work. This is a portrait of my grandmother. Um, and it was done in the 40s. An artist wanted to set her up with his son and she wasn't interested and so he offered to paint her and have her come into his studio so he could introduce the two of them. Um, they did not end up getting together, but we got this beautiful family heirloom and it was just something that I knew I always wanted to hang in my house someday. Over here underneath the painting is a collection of black and white boxes. So I started this collection years ago um, and I just whenever I find something that I think is special and different than the pieces that I already have, um, I'll add them to the collection and there's really no rhyme or reason to where they are. My kids tend to play here and hide all sorts of things. Yes, they hide like, you know, a ponytail holder and all these fun things in the boxes. Um, and, you know, a few of them have gotten broken over the years, but I'm a big believer in living in the house and letting my kids enjoy it and not being scared. And unfortunately, that just means things get broken sometimes. So this is the growing, but also sometimes not growing <laughs> collection of black and white boxes. Um, if you come over this way, um, one thing that I knew once I landed on a color scheme for this room is that I really wanted to include artwork that was done by my sister. So she is an artist based in Brooklyn and her work is um, all pointillism with pen and ink. And so it's incredibly time consuming and she is so meticulous. And um, so these pieces here are done by her. They're originals that are all ink. And if you really zoom in closely, you can see that all the gradation is done with dots. Um, so those are really, really special. Um, there's flanking either side of the sofa. Um, and then sort of the jumping off point for the color palette of this room was the sofa fabric. So this was the fabric that was in my grandparents' house growing up in their family room. And I just had like such a nostalgia around it. And um, I know it could lean very formal and traditional. And so I liked the idea of combining it with my sister's art and um, having it still feel fresh and new, but meaningful to me. And then I just wanted this to be a really comfy spot for us to gather. So when we've got a small group, we can be over here, and we actually use the day bed a ton. And what's really nice about the day bed is that when we've got a larger group, people can sit there and they can interact with the people sitting here, but they also can interact with the people sitting in these chairs over by the fireplace. So it makes the room really like multifunctional depending on how many people we have that we're entertaining. Um, when it's just my husband and I, we are always in those green chairs by the fireplace all winter long, that's our spot. Um, and when the kids come in, obviously, they're everywhere, climbing over everything. Um, but around the holidays, this is where we spend all of our time. And whenever we're entertaining and the weather is not particularly nice, this is where we're at. We've got our screen and porch. Um, in Chicago, the season for a room like this is kind of short. so. 
What we've done is we've added heaters so that we can extend the life of when we use the space a little bit more. Um, and we do just about everything here. We have dinner with the kids out here. We hang out and read out here, have coffee in the morning. Um, we're big entertainers. And so this is sort of a staging area for the pool. We keep all the pool toys and towels. Um, so if you come on out, unfortunately it's a rainy day, but it's still a really great spot to listen to the rain. And actually that's one of the times when we use this the most is when it's not so nice outside. Um, we got a really fancy kegerator and filled it with rosé, which has been a really fun addition to our summer entertaining. Maybe not the most aesthetically pleasing, but really fun to have. So it's right here. And you just take a little glass and pour yourself some rosé. Cheers. <laughs> it's like my version of a frat house. Um, so that's been really fun and a big hit. Um, and we just wanted this room to be like functional and comfy and um, we just, we love it out here. We've got a fan for when it's super hot. We've got the heaters for when it's chilly and um, we try to extend the life of the space as much as possible. So this is our dining room. This actually used to be the formal living room and it went a few feet more that way, a few feet more behind me. It was this big, big formal room. Um, so we chopped it up a little bit and made this our dining room. Um, it tends to be a little bit darker because it's just northern exposure. So we lacquered the ceiling to reflect some light um, and just sort of like oh, brighten up the room a little bit. So sort of lending itself to that garden feel that I keep talking about that I really wanted in this house is this Arbor de Matisse paper. Um, it was offered in a lime green, but I really wanted something a little bit mossier, a little bit more natural. And so we custom did this wallpaper with them using um, Benjamin Moore's Alligator Alley as the ground. Um, and, and then we wanted to add some architectural interest to the room. And so um, we kept the light fixture really simple. Um, and then we've got some, uh, our dining room table is actually a gift from my mother-in-law that I had always loved. It's covered today by a tablecloth just to make it feel a little bit more summery in here. Um, I saw this pattern from the avenue and just fell in love with the color palette in this room. So we've got this. Um, and then adding that architectural interest were these two doors here. So this one leads into our butler's pantry and bar. Um, and then this one is what I call my prop closet. So when I'm entertaining and I need vases or candle holders, we've got everything stored here. Um, and it's a little bit of a mess. There's not a whole lot of rhyme or reason to where things are. Um, but I've got a huge collection of bud vases and votives that I use constantly when I'm entertaining. Um, I just found like these guys on Amazon and they're great. They're so, <laughs> it's, like been using them nonstop. Um, and then, just a collection of things that I found over the years. I have some um, teacups that my grandmother gave my daughter um, and it's just sort of a random smattering of things, but it gives me um, a great base for when I'm entertaining and want to set a fun table. I've got my own collection of things I can pull from. So here is where we store most of our china. Um, we have the set that we got as a wedding gift. Um, which is really special, but it's very formal. Um, and so we use that occasionally. And then recently my grandmother gave us her hunting china and I just love it. It's not something I necessarily would have chosen myself, but the color palette in this room is beautiful. I loved the nod to the outdoors um, and I love the whimsy of it. So that's been a really special addition for us um, when entertaining. So walking through the swinging door here takes us to our pantry. Um, our kitchen doesn't have a ton of cabinet space, and so this is very much an extension of our kitchen. It's an entertaining area. It's our bar. Um, we have a dishwasher. We have a wine fridge. We have a beverage fridge, a dog bed, really <laughs> so beautiful in here. Um, and then this is where I store my glasses and my plates um, and all the things that I collect. Um, and I can show you some of those things as well. Um, so here are some of our glasses, um, a lot of different colors and pieces that I have found over the years um, and gifts that we got as wedding for our wedding. Um, and then we've got food storage. So this is where all of the food is, all of our dry goods. Um, and then 
the not so pretty stuff, our air fryer and coffee maker also live here. Um, we've got a sink, some more glasses, things that belong to some of my grandparents and my parents. Um, and then coming this way, this is where our bar lives is inside of this cabinet. Um, so when we entertain, we can bring it all out onto the counter, but when we're not, we can put it away. Um, and then over here are um, our plates. And this is just one of those things that I love to buy and I don't always have so much of a use for, um, but at least I've got a dedicated spot for it for when we do use it. Um, and there's you know, lots of fun patterns and colors and things that maybe we're not using on an everyday basis, but that I love to have. So, you know, this has got beautiful colors and um, when we do have an occasion to use it, I love the way it looks in our dining room with the pink and green. So aside from the green lacquer in here, or the green high gloss, I should say, um, is the marble wallpaper on the ceiling. Um, and this was an opportunity to just add color and interest um, and a lot of personality and make this a jewel box of a space. So having a house that feels lived in and cozy and welcoming is like my number one priority, not only for myself, but also for my clients. I feel like a pretty room can only go so far if you don't feel like you wanna plop down in a chair and hang out and spend time. Um, and so a lot of thought goes into the colors that we use. Um, like in here, there's this chalky sort of muddy green and this room is all open to the backyard. And so you just feel like you're sort of a part of the garden when you're in here, which is very much what I wanted from the whole first floor was for the house to sort of live like this indoor outdoor experience. The, um, we don't have very tall ceilings, they're just eight feet. And so our windows go almost all the way down to the floor. And that gives the illusion of a little bit more height, but it also like really welcomes you into the outside, which I love. Um, and so as I was making color choices and textile choices, I was really trying to think about that concept of um, bringing the outside inside and making everything really comfy and easy. Um, so like even this room that I'm in right now, even though it's our formal living room, it's still a space that my kids hang out in. Um, like my sofa is a floral chintz, which means like it hides a lot of stains. <laughs> and um, the jute rug is really soft and so we can get down on the floor and do puzzles. And we really spend a lot of time in this room, even though it's technically a more formal space than like our family room is. Um, and I try to really come at my clients' houses with a similar perspective because I feel like that's how everyone wants to live for the most part, um, at least in our generation. I know it's how I want to live. Um, I want my kids to be able to come into every room and not be afraid to touch things. This is our kitchen. This space used to be quite a bit smaller and much more closed off. Um, so we did open it up a little bit just to allow some light to come in. My husband felt very, very strongly about wanting a white kitchen. Um, it was one of his only design requests, so I made sure to honor that. Um, and we have the ledge where I can display some things. Um, this here is a um, oil painting of the South Shore of Nantucket, which is a really meaningful place to us um, that I bought at auction. And so I like having those elements in the kitchen that maybe don't feel so kitcheny, um, make it a little bit cozier. And um, this is really just a utility space. You know, it's functional, it's open, it's clean, it's bright. Um, and then we wallpapered it in this green grass cloth to add some warmth um, and to make sure that the, all the white didn't feel quite so stark. Um, so if we're coming this way, we've got our gigantic dog crate and our badly behaved puppy. And, um, and then we've got our breakfast nook. And so this is where we eat a lot of our meals as a family. It's open to our backyard um, and you very much feel like you're just sitting outside um, with all the greenery. And so I really leaned into that with the drapes um, and the dark green chairs. And then the table is just a super functional table from Amazon that is totally indestructible. My kids can trash it, nothing will happen. Um, and that has been wonderful to not have to worry about that there because there's lots of arts and crafts that are done here. 
Um, so then if you come this way, when we bought the house, this was all closed up and this was actually um, the formal dining room. And so because of the relation to the kitchen, we wanted this to become our family room. So we widen this opening quite a bit. So they are, they're two separate rooms, but they very much relate to each other and feel like they're um, completely open. So if you move this way, this is our family room. Um, this is where my kids hang out and watch TV and watch movies and play. And um, I, my one thing that I felt really, really strongly about when we did this room was that I wanted it to be a space where they could live and live comfortably, but I could put away all their toys at the end of the day and not have to look at the chaos. And so we were very thoughtful about how we integrated that. Um, so if you come over this way, um, we built this window seat that is the whole length of the wall. And not only does it give us a ton of additional seating, which we use on a very regular basis when we're entertaining, um, all the drawers are an opportunity for toys to be hidden away. So these are all filled to the brim. My kids know that they can take anything they want out and play with it. Um, it just has to go back in at the end of the day. And so this is a nice way to keep the room feeling clean, but still really functional as a room where my kids can be. Um, and the idea is that it's just comfortable in here. It's easy. We've got an ottoman for everyone to put their feet up. Um, the sofa has taken a beating, but it still looks pretty decent. Um, and then these are mid-century chairs that I bought at a vintage shop um, when we lived downtown. Probably at this point, it's been like, I would say 12 years, and they have moved from three different homes with us, reupholstered, they're super comfortable, um, and they've just always sort of made their way into our house. Over here, um, we added some built-ins so that we could have some space to display meaningful things and books and pictures. And I knew that I wanted to buy this photograph um, when we bought the house. And so I designed the built-ins around this piece. Um, it's a photograph by Nantucket photographer Michael Gaillard. It's of um, the Madiket Creeks. And I just absolutely love it. I love the colors. I love being reminded of one of my favorite places when I'm in here. And so we designed this whole wall to accommodate this piece. Um, Silly me, when I had one child and I was designing this, I thought this would be, was gonna be a perfect spot for everyone to sit and do their homework, and that was how we designed it. It is not at all how it's used. Um, it's actually, most of the time, used as a changing table, which is very chic, um, but very functional. Um, and when we have guests, it's easy to clear off. Um, and it also just keeps this walkway feeling very open, which I think is important now that we live in the house and kind of see that that would not be a spot we would want to clog up with chairs. So now I will take you upstairs to our primary suite. This piece here is actually a scarf. Um, my mom was wearing it to dinner one night years ago and I took it off of her and was looking at it and I was like, this is way too pretty to be bunched up around your neck. You should frame it. And um, a few months later, she had it framed and gave it to me as a gift. And so this is just that special piece with a great story. So coming in here is our primary suite. Um, anyone who knows me knows I'm a big bed person. It's my happiest place. So I really wanted this to be a sanctuary for me. Um, we used this Schumacher Madame Pompadour paper, and I know I sound like a broken record, but I wanted that garden feel in here as well. And I kept everything else really sort of neutral and calm. Um, and like my sheets and my bedding is of the utmost importance to me in terms of comfort. Um, the nightstands are vintage pieces that I found um, years ago and had lacquered. Um, and then when we first moved in, I had Laura Deems um, commission these two pieces from her just to add in something sort of unexpected on the paper. I liked the juxtaposition of the abstract art on top of the chinoiserie paper. Um, and then one thing we did do during the construction is the rear elevation of the house really bothered me. It felt like it was sort of, um, there was no, it, there was no rhyme or reason to where things were. And so our architect came up with the idea of adding this second floor terrace to create some cohesion along the back. 
And um, as an added bonus, we got this little seating area off of our bedroom. This chair over here, although a little bit worse for the wear, was um, my brother's chair in his nursery. Um, and I commandeered it and took it as my own. And then my sister Needle pointed me a pillow, which is so special. Um, and then the company out of the UK, Hunt and Hope, they um, did this Needle Point pillow for us in the color scheme of the room. So if you come through here, this is our primary closet. So this actually used to be the primary bedroom of the house, um, and our bedroom was a guest bedroom. There was a hallway through here. So we took this over as our closet. Um, it's a ton of storage. I do like clothing and fashion, and so it gives me a spot for all of those things. Um, and a really nice place to get ready together. So this is our little patio off our bedroom. Um, it's not the most beautiful day, but it's a nice spot to sit and just have a drink or read a book and you're separated from everything and you've got a beautiful view of the backyard um, and all the greenery. My favorite thing about our house is that we live and use every inch of it. Um, I think what I felt really strongly about is that I didn't want a house that I felt like we were sort of like wandering around in and, um, and that there would be a space that we weren't using. And we really use and live in all of this house and I love that and I love when my kids ask to have breakfast in our dining room or you know, we go and like play a game in our living room in spaces that I think are maybe not as obvious to use on an everyday basis. I love that as a family, we live in those rooms. I am like the ultimate homebody and I would do everything out of my home. So when I think of home, I really think of like my nest, it's where I'm raising my kids, it's where I'm happiest, it's where I'm most comfortable. Um, it's sort of like the root of everything for me. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.